So we started writing our complex class, but we haven't actually done anything with it. We made sure that it compiles, but you know, it's nice to actually see what we can do with a class. So I want to create another source file. I'll call it use complex because that's what we're going to do in here. And it needs to include complex.h because it needs to have access to this declaration of the class as well as the declarations of any other functions that are kind of associated with the working of the class. Because I'm going to want to be able to print stuff out, I'm going to also include IO stream. You might wonder about the order of these things. As a general rule, you should put standard libraries before your libraries. The order in which you put standard libraries depends. Uh, some people like to alphabetize them, some people like to do other systems, but the rule of standard libraries before your libraries is pretty consistent. So let's write a main in here because if I want to be able to do something with this, I need to have a main. And we have a return. Let's make two complex numbers. So A is a complex number. One real, two imaginary. And B is a complex number. Values three and four. And complex C will be A plus B. We'll just see if that compiles. So I want to compile use complex and complex.cpp together and it compiles. Of course it doesn't do anything yet other than and it adds them and then it returns but it doesn't show us anything. So it's tempting to say, hey, well, let's just print out C. And then we come over here and we compile this and oh, that's not happy. Okay. Turns out that this operator is currently not defined for complex. So, well, okay, print out the real part. Nope, we can't do that because real is private. Oh, uh, also I am don't have access to to that. Uh, what if I want to make it so that I actually can print out this uh, complex number? Well, we could do that by adding inside of the complex here, we could have the ability to, we would need to make it so that it gives us back an output stream. We could overload operator, the uh, two less thans, and make it so that it actually does the output inside of it. Uh, this is kind of going beyond what we've done so far. So, Perhaps a better way to do this would be to have something that converts it to a string. And then we'll come back here. put a definition for this function. Make sure that it knows that this is part of class complex.
So I'm going to pause there. Actually, wait, let's change this so that I call the to string. And then we compile. We are running into problems in the header file because I use string, but I don't have a pound include for it. And then in the CPP, string on line 18 up oh. unless I put a using statement actually in here I can put a using statement because we're in the CVP file so let's go ahead and do that so that I can use string as much as I want and not have a problem with it plus equals real Red, red plus equals a plus sign red plus equals imaginary red plus equals an I. Okay. Hmm, that was not really what we wanted it to do. Okay, so, and you might have been wondering, well, why are you writing this out so long? Uh, because it turns out that the strings in C++ and the numbers don't interact quite as nicely as we might like. Um, other things that I really want to demonstrate in this Let's go back to here. We'll ignore the outputting. I could make these things public to make it a little bit easier uh, or work on this a bit more to get it to work. But one of the things that I kind of want to demonstrate is what happens when we do something like that. Notice that that compiles. Yeah. Uh, but wait, wait. I didn't write in here anywhere an operator that does multiplication between an int or a double and a complex. So what's going on? How is this line of code here compiling? What is that actually doing? And it turns out that the answer to this is any time in C++ that you write a constructor that takes one argument, it is by default turned into an implicit conversion. These are dangerous. The vast majority of the time, this is not what you want. Now, in the case of the complex class, it's probably a safe thing to do, okay? because it is safe to turn the number four into a complex number that is four real and zero imaginary, and then do our mathematical operations with that. However, imagine that you have a class that represents a student and you have a constructor that just takes the student's name. You really don't want to have it so that in a program someone can pass a string into a function that wants a student and it'll automatically create a student just from that string. That would be bad. If you do not want this to be an implicit converger, uh, conversion, you need to mark it as explicit. And then when you go to compile, it this will no longer work. It says there is no operator for 4 times a because it can't do that implicit conversion. As I said, in the case of our complex class, 
this is actually really helpful. It makes it easier. All of a sudden it works for multiplication. Both our multiplication and our addition will work uh, fairly nicely. Let's check addition because in some ways the addition ah, the addition doesn't work so well and that's because addition wasn't defined as a outside function it was defined as a method in the class and so this does not convert 4 to a complex so that it can call that operator. This will do it because this is actually calling an exterior function. So that's another reason why it's better to define your operators outside of the class instead of inside of them. So this kind of covers our basic introduction to classes. We'll come back and we'll start looking at some of the special methods that exist in classes, things that C++ creates for you if you don't create them yourself, and the role that they play in the life cycle of objects.